Welcome to the Canadian Business Quarterly Podcast, where we speak with Canada's most influential industry leaders on the business and economic development issues taking place across the country. You can stay up to date with all of our content, including our publications, newsletters, and podcasts by visiting www.thecbq.ca and clicking on subscribe. Matt Bourgeois has been with T2 Utility Engineers for more than 16 years, working closely with an exceptional team providing industry-leading utility engineering services to clients across Canada. Over the years, he has held numerous different positions throughout the organization and is currently the president of the Canadian business of T2. Matt and his wife, Leah, live in Bowmanville, Ontario with their two children. He is passionate about providing quality service to clients and helping them resolve their utility-related challenges. Matt, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So give us the background and history of T2 Utility Engineers. Absolutely. Uh, The company started back in 2002 uh, with a joint venture between TSH and TBE. Tan Sim Subiki was a small consulting firm offering various engineering services in Ontario and the U.S.-based firm Tampa Bay Engineering specializing in subsurface utility engineering. This joint venture was formed to provide services to the Canadian market, leveraging TSH's client base combined with TBE's technical expertise. The company grew quickly through the years, and in early 2008, ACOM purchased TSH. Then later that same year, Cardinal purchased TBE. TSH TBE continued to operate as a joint venture, and in 2012, it was renamed T2 Utility Engineers. The name comes from taking one T from TSH and the other from TBE. Since 2019, we have been 100% owned by Intija. We are one of five divisions working together to provide engineering services across Australia, the United States, New Zealand, and Canada. Here in Canada, we have approximately 100 staff providing utility engineering services with three offices in Ontario, Whitby, Oakville, and Ottawa, and one in Edmonton, Alberta. T2 also provides similar services in the U.S. with approximately 300 staff under the leadership of the U.S. President Craig Snyder. Okay. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the industries uh, that you service? Yeah. Uh, Actually, we provide support to really any industry that needs to better understand the below ground and requires assistance dealing with potential impacts uh, to their proposed work. So the majority of industries we work with would be transportation, water, wastewater, land development, telecommunications, energy, and gas. Do you want to take us through a little bit, you know, of of who these clients are that you're working with? And and then we'll we'll get into a little bit deeper. Yeah, sure. So we provide um, subsurface utility engineering engineering services in accordance with industry recognized standards and guidelines. We work with many different clients, such as municipalities, government agencies, consulting engineers, land developers, and property owners. The services we offer fall into a few different categories. Subsurface utility engineering being the largest. This is the collection and depiction of underground utility information following the industry standard ASCE 38 with the objective of reducing the overall risk and cost to design and construction projects. Utility coordination focuses on minimizing the need for relocations through early identification and communication with the project design team reducing claims, and extensive delays during construction. CCTV sewer investigations is essentially driving remote control devices through pipes in order to determine condition and alignment, which aids in the design and maintenance planning. And lastly, geophysics, advanced geophysics. This uses ground penetrating radar and other tools to investigate underground voids, tunnels, septic beds, grave sites, and other anomalies. When we were talking, uh, you had mentioned sort of the the progression of of ownership and buyouts of the company, which was quite interesting. So why don't you tell us how you got involved yourself? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So after graduation um, from civil engineering at Loyalist College, I started working in the residential design business. And in 2005, the firm decided to move things from Ontario to Vancouver. As I was recently married with a young family, relocation was not something that I was interested in. So I started the job search which found me at T2 Utility Engineers. Starting as a drafting technician, from there as the business grew, I took on new challenges and positions, including project coordination, project management, branch management, regional manager, and now in the president role. 
Hired as the fifth employee back in 2005, and today with approximately 100 staff across Canada, it has been a very rewarding journey with so many amazing people. After all that, you know, now that we've uh, identified what you do, why don't you take us through the projects that you're currently working on that you know, some of our listeners might actually recognize? Yeah, we have so many interesting projects currently on the go, so it'd be challenging to cover all of them, but uh, we can touch on a few, light rail transit projects, um, subway and municipal projects. So we're currently supporting the Finch and here Ontario light rail transit projects, along with the Scarborough subway extension, providing mapping and utility coordination services. Um, in the city of Toronto, for a number of years, they have been working to reduce the risk of flooding by improvements to the sewer systems and overland, overland drainage routes across the city. We have been involved in this basement flooding protection program for over 10 years, providing survey, mapping, chamber investigations, and CCTV services. Uh, as our Edmonton office, also sorry, our Edmonton office is currently working with the overall design team on the Yellowhead Trail Freeway Conversion Project, which, is, which will convert 25 kilometers of road into a freeway with a program budget of $1 billion. Can you share a few of uh, the interesting projects that T2 has been involved in? Absolutely. Um, so providing valuable and often surprise information to our clients is one of the most enjoyable aspects of the job. Uh, one of the projects that we were, we were on, we were able to identify a 100-year-old buried railway track in a developed downtown area. Identifying this early in the design allowed for proper planning, cost estimating, and scheduling. On another project, the design team was planning to relocate utilities under the sidewalk. However, some early investigations, uh, we determined that the basements of, the numerous, of numerous buildings protruded to the curb line of the road. With this information, designs were altered, saving certain cost and scheduling impacts during construction. Another exciting aspect is that we have the opportunity to work on so many, so many different projects uh, with different clients across Canada. We recently had a job in Moose Factory, which is a very remote location in Northern Ontario. Our field crews needed to drive eight hours to Cochrane, load trucks and equipment onto a train for the trip to Moose and E, then go by helicopter over to Moose Factory Island to complete our investigations. T2 gets involved in so many different investigations to help clients with their underground challenges. Every project is unique. I have even received a phone call from a homeowner that was looking for assistance finding a five gallon pail of gold bars buried by his grandfather on their property. He had a treasure map and surprisingly enough, he'd already found four of the five pails, um, but needed help with the last. Unfortunately, the area he needed us to investigate was heavily treed, preventing equipment access and the client elected not to clear the area. And what are your thoughts for the future of the utility engineering industry? The industry is experiencing extensive growth, and I see that continuing as more and more project owners and designers appreciate the importance of quality information as early as possible in the life cycle of a project. This, along with continued education through numerous industry associations and groups, I feel the future is very bright for the utility engineering industry. And, and what are the challenges that the industry itself is facing at the moment? I would say that, uh, that one of the biggest one is scope clarity. It continues to be a challenge uh, across the industry. There have been improvements over the years, but there's still a long way to go. In general, I feel that RFP scopes are needed uh, to be a bit clearer. Unfortunately, I've talked to too many clients that have not received the needed information to complete their designs. And this often comes down to the original scope requested. We need more project owners clearly requesting investigations be completed in compliance with the ASCE 38. This will ensure proper processes are followed and will have the deliverables reviewed, signed and sealed by a professional engineer. Working with a trusted, experienced firm can help refine the scope, maximize value and ensure the information critical to the design and construction is provided. And, and what are some of the business lessons that you personally have learned that, that you might wanna share with us today? Quick one, I think. I think just saying that, that the health and longevity of any business is based on passionate people dedicated to client service, quality, and teamwork. Fair enough. And, and before we finish, is there anything else that you, you haven't had a chance to address? Uh, no, I think we've covered everything, Jesse. Thanks for the opportunity to talk about utility engineering and how T2 can help designers, municipalities, and project owners reduce their overall risk on projects. Excellent. Thanks very much, Matt. Thank you.
This has been a production of the Canadian Business Quarterly, a division of Romulus Rising Proprietary Limited. All rights reserved. You can stay up to date with the Canadian Business Quarterly, including our publications, newsletters, and podcasts by visiting www.thecbq.ca and clicking on subscribe.